So if you don't so need that one, we can use. Do what? The one that you posted on the seventeenth. No, the one I posted just a few minutes ago. Uh, Do you see it? No, I just, I mean, it Refresh happen. and make sure I got it in the right class. <laughs> Hmm. I don't think that's the right one. Hang on. Something is it. Yeah, you should have it. That doesn't seem like the right one. Hang on. I don't like it. I'll put today's date. I wonder where it went. It probably got posted somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, see if that one shows up. I don't know what I did before. Something wrong, obviously. Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for checking. I don't know where it went. Well, everybody's getting that downloaded. Let's go ahead and get it open if you already have yours. And the first thing that I think we want to do is just a little bit of cleaning up. All right, we have our app here. We have done so much. You guys have done so good. Look around, you see you've lost a few. It's what? It's been a week quick scan with like Windows. Oh, <laughs> Give me some errors. Give me a virus. But you guys have done a great job. We're getting here towards the end of the semester. You can tell if you if you can tell, I will tell you. My daughter, when she was in college, was very worried about money. She hated classes that didn't give her her money's worth. So if you can't tell, it's very important to me to make sure you guys get a lot of content for your money that it's worth it to you. So again, let me know if you're having trouble because it's about you. We want you to understand what's going on here and gain knowledge. Now, looking at our application here, we've gotten it to the point where when we run it, we're going to display information about our default audio CD. We can click reset to clear everything out and then type in information to add a new audio CD. When we click OK, we'll get a message box with that information on it. We need to add some more here. What we're going to add, what we would like this thing to do now. We'd like to be able to add a list box over here on the side. And as people enter in our audio CDs or our audio media, we want to display them in this list box over here on the side. I'd also like for people to be able to click on one and have that one display over here in our detail area so that they could update it. And then if they wanted to, they could click OK on it again. So that's where we're kind of headed today. Try to get all of that working. Now, a couple of things. In the past, Windows applications have often used multiple forms. So when I first started teaching here, I would have this be a second form, and our list box would be the main form when you opened it. We would have a two-form system. That's kind of become an obsolete way of handling things. Users don't like having to have one form hidden with another form on top. So the newer way is the way we'll be doing where the list and the detail information are showing up together. So be thinking about that. We will, at the end of the day today, I'll show you how to do a menu 
and will display a second form so that you know a little bit about how to do that. But that's kind of losing popularity. All right, so first thing I want to do is look at my code. Uh huh. Files that you posted, does it not have like the form one design? Did you extract it? Yeah. From the zip file? But it's not like the one with the picture of the form, like that. But yes, it should be just like this. And I see that it's got the designer form one dot cs, but not the. So double click on form one dot cs. Yeah. That's right. And that should show you the. Everybody getting it? All right. Okay, so I want to look at our code here. And whenever we're working with our form, we can double click on any of the controls we've already used to go right to that event procedure in our code. We can right click and choose view code. We can press F7. Um, any of those things will work to get us to our code window. See if I can zoom in a little bit here. I don't want to zoom in too much, but a little bit. So the first thing that I'd like to do, like I mentioned, is clean up a little bit. If you're working with your code, that's great. We probably need to add some comments to it too, right? So let's put some comments here at our class. I'm going to use the three slashes so that it generates the XML headers for us. And we'll put something in like app. Um, we'll call this audio media maintenance. And you're the developer. And I'm going to put today down, even though we might have worked on it a little bit already. Ten years from now, nobody will know, right? Now, our purpose is to allow maintenance of audio media items for our store. So, we put that in however we like. When we look at our class, we had our private class variable. We've already got that commented, so we're pretty good. But I would like to comment this constructor. We didn't create this constructor. Visual Studio generated it for us. But let's go ahead and put a comment there. And I'm going to do the three slashes and say this is our form one constructor. And if you notice, this is our default. No R constructor, right? 
So the system created that for us when it created the form. But we could use that if we wanted to, if we wanted to do something when our form was initialized. We use the form load either place. Okay, so there's our constructor. Let's put in a comment then for our OK button. Our OK button is doing a lot of our work here in this application. If you do the three slashes, the system will automatically generate the parameter comments for you so that you've got that set up. So let's say this event procedure will handle adding and updating media instances. That should be enough for us there with our OK button. We know what's going on with it. Now next, I have the text changed. This is where we might have a little bit of differences depending on what code you have for the different um, text boxes that had to be numeric data. So I tried to get the same thing, but I think I got a little bit different. So hopefully you'll have lots of different examples and you can kind of pick which one you like best and stick with it. Or you can like this one, use different ones depending on the case. But let's go ahead and document this one. And I'm gonna do my three slashes and say this event procedure validates input as numeric. Now in my quantity, the, one, the validation that I have here is um, this loop one that was doing this trimming of the string down and then it keeps recreating the string to make sure that it's numeric. If you go through the debugger on that one, you'll see it's a little resource intensive. Now the next one that I have is the cost. I'm gonna put a comment here. This event procedure will validate the input as numeric. Whenever we're looking at our cost, remember, we were thinking that it should be able to handle a decimal place. So this is the same loop, only it will allow a dot in addition to numeric data. Now I think this is the one you guys were testing last week you found that you could actually enter multiple dots. So it's not totally foolproof, but it's, it's pretty, pretty full retardant, just not completely foolproof, right? All right, so we'll use it. Next we have our num tracks. This event procedure will validate the input as numeric. And this one is doing that handled event by the key press. So we'll try to run all of these through the debugger today and we'll see that every time that a key is pressed, this event procedure is executed. So this is the one that won't allow any non-numeric data to ever be even typed, right? Kind of makes it look like your keyboard is broke. So I don't know if I like this kind, but a lot of people really do. So it doesn't matter what I think. Okay, what about our reset button? Let's document it. This event procedure will reset the display. And then in that one last time, we decided that we should create a method that cleared out all our text boxes because I was telling you, I was thinking we might have to do that in some other places, and it's a logical grouping of code. So let's document that. This method clears the form data. Finally, our form load This event procedure will execute to prepare the form for display.
We got it all? Let's save that. Now, it's really important to um, follow along with this one because this should be hopefully the last time we update it, I'm hoping, and it should be very much usable as an example for you for your final. So it's something that you're gonna wanna keep and not be surprised by things. All right, so we've got a lot of comments in here the way we want, and we saw earlier that it was very helpful for us to create a method that took care of clearing out our text box fields. As I scroll through, I see that in our OK button, click event, we have some code like that that is something that we might want to execute from many different places. And it's this code where we take the text box info and load it into our CD instance. So I'd like to take these lines of code and put them in their own method. Let's create a method for them. I'm gonna create that method right under this button OK, click event. So it will be private and it will be a void method because we don't need to return anything. We're gonna be loading up our audio class data files. So let's call it load class data. And what I'd like is all six of our lines of code plus our comments that set our CD instance fields or properties equal to the text box fields. So I'm gonna cut that out of the OK button event procedure and paste it into our new load class data. Now let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that all together hopefully. And then I'm gonna add a call to that new method where that code used to be. So instead of having all of our instant CD properties that equal to our text boxes within this event procedure, let's move it into its own method, call that method. Got it? Now we wanna do that in a couple of other places because it looks like we're gonna be doing this quite a bit, right, back and forth. Anytime somebody clicks on our list, we're gonna to wanna to load the data into the text boxes, and then anytime they update the data, we're gonna to wanna to pull it from the text boxes. So let's scroll, scroll through and see where else we need to do that. And it looks like the only other place is in our form load. So in our form load, Let's create a method called load form data and move all of that code into it. So this will also be private. And I want all of our six lines of code in there. And then I want to run it from that form load method. Now we did a little bit of rearranging. So let's go ahead and run and make sure that nothing is messed up. Sure. You see it? Today we definitely jump around, so yell anytime I'm flying past something you need. Okay, I'm gonna run it. Now it looks like my load form data method worked okay because I'm still seeing data on the screen. I'm gonna click reset to clear it and then type something in. That's okay, and I should see my message box. Everybody good? Um, when I hit clear to the reset button, it says please enter a valid number of tracks. Does that mean? Yeah. Okay. 
will and fix it. Okay, okay, so it is from the um, number of tracks check because of the key press event. So we'll see if that's going to give us trouble. Well, so for right now, ignore it. Okay, yeah, because the one that you did that you sent us is different than the one you have the num tracks of the text change one. And it does uh, the, the tri bars that it stays in. Okay, so uh, just ignore that error message for now. And it should go away, is why I say again, that. It, it, I mean, it will, it will get fixed okay. as things happen. So if not, we will fix it. But that should match what I sent you. I want you to match. Why are you not oh, yeah, matching? The one that you sent us is way different than what you have. That's not, I don't want you to use it then. That's no good. Whenever my program loads, it has like the default 20 minutes. Yeah, that's okay. That we told it to do that. Oh uh, yeah, we didn't do the one oh two. Maybe that's the one you want to do. That's the one I want. It's one oh two, huh? I'm just messing with ya. Let's see. Uh, so should also be the default one. Do I? Should our output also be the default since it's the default one? Hang on, let me fix this, please. I try, but I can only do two things at once. Okay, hang on, because I'm going to redo this one so that you'll have the comments that we just made, or you'll have to redo all of those. Okay, see if that's better. Now you guys know why I don't like to load things out to Canvas because with there's so many versions, it can be very difficult. And I think I just put it on the wrong class. Nope, it came up. Is it the right one? Yep. Yay. All right, are we better? One thing on this one I sent, if you guys will look at the form, the ID label is missing, so you might have to put that on up there. ID. Great, okay. So we've all got awesome documentation in our code, and we've got new methods created to handle logical things, logical lumps of code, like moving all the text boxes to the class, moving all the class fields to the text boxes. Those make sense because those are logical chunks of code that belong together. So now let's fix this things up, thing up. Let's go to your form and look at design mode, and I want to select 
everything. Here I'm going to do a rubber band selection and I want to move stuff over to the side of my form a little bit. And then I'm going to stretch my form out so that I kind of have room and this other half for a list box. Now, on your controls, find the list box control. Be super careful, do not get the list view. The list view is real different. It'll work too, and it's a great control, and you should look at it, but it's not the one that we're using today, so we don't want to grab it by accident. So list box, and we want this list box drawn over here on this side of our form where it'll just display our mm -hmm. item. Now my list box, I'm going to rename. So that's the first thing I'm going to do with this. And I'm going to name it LSTBX items. It's all of our audio items. Now a couple of other things. Looking at this thing, I need to increase the font. If you'll notice that I didn't update the font on my form, so I'm having to change it for each thing that I add to my form, which is why we want to do that normally when we get started. All right, in our list box, if we look at any of the other items, um, I don't think there's anything else that we need to change as far as controls go. I did notice, though, that when we were using our numeric checks, we were popping up message boxes. Message boxes are super annoying to users. They interrupt their thoughts flow, their thought process, kind of like the two form thing. The reason we've gone to just one form with two sides is because it lets our users flow better. We don't interrupt their thoughts as much by jumping to just one item and then back to the list. Same with a message box. A message box is super distracting, really interrupting. And you guys know that if you've been listening to the Zoom sessions, when I've been doing something that generates a lot of dings and interrupts, it gets really annoying. So we don't want to do that. What we want instead is some sort of message down at the bottom of our form that we can use as a place to say we have non-numeric input. So let's put a text box down across the bottom. Some of these controls that us programmers think are so cool, users get really annoyed by them. Okay, so here's my text box. I put it at the bottom of the form, and what I want to do is I want to make it blend in. So I'm going to go find its, um, let's see, I'll change its name first. Let's name it TXTBX status. So it's going to be our status info display. I want my back color to be the same color as my form because I kind of want it to blend in. I don't want it to really stick out, so I'm gonna choose that same color. Now I want my font to be 12, and I might want my four color to be something that's a little bit more abrupt. Since we're not gonna ding and be so violent to the user, we might want a message color that is a little bit more noticeable. So pick something you think that would really stand out to them. I'm thinking on this color, let's try, oh, something really gross, like chartreuse. See if it will show up that way. Now, a couple of other things on this text box. I want it to not be enabled. So I'm gonna change my enabled property to false. No typing in there. I want my read only to be true. Those two properties kind of offset each other, but they also kind of emphasize each other. And then lastly, I want to make my tab stop false. I don't want the tab key to even take the cursor there. So enabled is false, read only is true, and tab stop is false. Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. And I changed the four color too. But I don't know if that'll work because it didn't last time.
I've got a cheese block up from the tab saw or tab in there. Okay, so we added two really important things here. We added our text box, which can be our status, and then our list box. Yeah. I'd like to get our text box implemented first because we're going to be looking through all that code and we can get lost easy. So let's do it first. I'm going to go look at my code and I'm going to start at the top. So we might not be organized the same. But if we are, we should be able to go top down. Now, the first thing I want to do is in our OK button, instead of setting up this message box, I want to use our new status text box. So I'm going to comment out this message box show. Again, it's obnoxious and our users don't like it. So let's instead up, update text box status dot text to say item added. And then I'll do like three dots. Dot, dot, dot. Now, notice I'm keeping this updating of our status outside of this method. I don't want it in this method because I'm going to use this method all over the place. I might want a different status in different places. So it does not logically belong in that method. Now let's keep going. Um, if, do, oh, here we go. In my quantity text changed. It has a message box dot show. Don't like it. Going to change it. Instead, let's make it be text box status dot text equals please enter a valid quantity. Which function did you say this was? This is mine is text box quantity, but yours might look a little different. So just wherever you've got a message box, make it say something meaningful. I think the one we did just a moment ago was the only one I had. I okay. I have this method. And I tried to add them all in. So I also have the text box cost. I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing some of the methods you have. I just add. That's all right. And you can grab that, you grab that if you want it. Yep, grab that zip file if you want to have those different examples, but it's not going to kill you if you don't. And then lastly, my is digit one, I don't have to do a thing with, right? That's why a lot of people like that one because it just won't let you type anything bad. So I don't have to worry about it. So you can see why those ones get to be super loved. All right, and then in our form load, after we do the load form data, let's update our status. And we'll say default data loaded. Now we had to find just the right spot to put that stuff for it to come out in the right place. Let's run it and make sure we got it. First, we should see default data loaded. But notice how that four color I used didn't really matter very much because since it's read only and disabled, it's kind of hard to read, isn't it? So we might want to not maybe make it disabled. Let's try some of those. Now, before I mess with that though too much, I'm going to click reset and I'm going to type something in. I think when I click reset, I would like it to say ready to add data. And, and so I need to update something there. I'll put in a, some things, some test data. 
And now I get my item added message. Okay, so two things on that that we want to update in our debugging. First of all, on our form, for our TXT box enable, um, status, I'm going to change the enabled from false to true so that hopefully I can see that message a little better. Then I want to find my reset button code. So I'm just going to double click on this reset button. Oh, and right now all we do is call our reset form method. And we need to add a little bit to that. PXT box status dot text equals ready to add. So now if I run, oh, I got my ugly green default data loaded. If I click reset, I've got my ready to add message. So that looks good. Those were the things I was wanting to test there. Okay, everybody good? Look good there so far? Okay, because what we want to do now is add to our list box. So just in the same way, is our text box here where we gotta kind of jump around just a little teeny bit of code, but that little teeny bit of code has to go in just the right place to make the things happen that we want to happen. Our list box is gonna be that same way. We have to get it in just the right place. So let's look at our form. And that's what's kind of helpful for us to know what the right place is. So what I'm thinking is if somebody is looking at an empty set of text boxes and they type data in and they click OK, I would like that item to add automatically to the list box. If somebody is looking at a list box and clicks on one, I would like for that item to show up over here and be ready to change. So let's see how we could get started. The first place I want to go is our form load. And in our form load, we build that default item. Let's go find it. Right here in our form load, we say we're going to create that default audio CD. We load it, and then we update our text status. After we update our text status, let's add it to our list box. Our list box was named list box items, and the items property of a list box is where the array is, right? So all of the items that are in our list box are in the items array, and we want to add to that. Now, what we want to add is our instance CD. So just like we could keep track of all of these objects in an array, we're going to try to keep track of all of these objects in our list box. So let's run it. Does our default one show up in our list box? It should. Oh, there it is. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah, it's kind of ugly. I don't know. Because it's just taking the default to string method for it to display it. I'm yep. Guessing. Yep, it is. And so we're going to mess with that here in a minute and see what we can do if we can make it any better. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and update our add routine so that it adds something to that list box also. And then we'll have a little more to work with. So in our code, go find your OK button. So here's my OK button. I want to. Um, Let's see, where do we want to add that? We've got this reset form. That shouldn't hurt anything. Let's put it right after we update our text status, just like we did in our form load. We want to add to the items. And what we want to add is our instant CD. Now let's run it 
And again, it's going to look kind of ugly from that first one. We definitely have got to get that fixed up. But let's do an ad. I'm going to click reset, type in some information here. Type, type. Oh, there I do. I see the stuff that I added. Now, if you add, you should be able to just keep adding items and show, having them show up in your list. And of course, we've got some formatting to do. Definitely of that two string to fix it all up. But it's looking really good. Notice that it's just kind of letting us add items over and over the way we've got our code set up until we're ready to be done. And if we were done, then we could click on an item. And then if we click on an item, we'd like it to show up. Here. So let's make our code work to make that show up and then we'll start prettying things up. So I'm going to stop running. So everybody's look okay adding? Got stuff to add okay? Got it? All right. So I want to go to my form and I'm going to double click on my list box because that's where I want to add this code when somebody clicks on an item in our list box. Now, when they click on an item in our list box, <coughs> we're going to get the method selected index changed. Now, we're going to need to know because we're going to have the user type new data and click OK to save a new instance, or they can update old data and type click OK and we'll update an existing instance. So, somehow we're going to need to know. Are we updating one or do we have an existing one? Well, our index, our selected index is a way for us to know. So let's go up to the top of our code and we're going to add another class variable, an instance variable. Oops, I've got cat slack on obviously. This is going to be our selected index and we want to start with this equal to minus one. And minus one means nothing is selected in a list box. Well, it got all mad at me. Look at it, help me. Here's what I actually want that to say. Ooh, how about I make it an integer? All morning doing Python code will get you. Now I'm going to set it again to minus one because I want it to. I want to have this specified. There is nothing selected. We don't have one. Now as I scroll through, whenever we're looking at. Um, our OK button, we're going to be checking that. But for right now, we are looking at one that they clicked on. So let's update our selected index and set it equal to the one they clicked on. Now in our list box, we also have a property called selected item. And that should be the audio CD that we selected. So can we make that work as our instant CD? The instant CD I want is the one that's in our list box that they clicked on. Right now it says, no, you can't do that. You can't convert this implicit object to this instance CD. Well, can we cast it as an audio CD?
So now for this one, somebody has clicked on one. We're going to save the index of the one they clicked on. We're going to get the data and make it an audio CD instance again. Now we need to call our method that copies stuff from our audio CD to our text fields, our load form data. And then we can update our status message. And we'll just say audio data loaded. Now there's one more place we say audio data loaded. That's in our form load. So in our form load, we need to make sure that we set that selected index to zero. We started out with it at minus one, but since we're loading up one CD in our form load, we're gonna set it to zero. That's the, one that, the only one that's there. Down in my list box selected index change. Uh -huh. It gives me an error that says cannot convert type into CD audio. Is that the same place or are you in a different place? Do you have that? Are you in a different place, Colin? Is it above? What? Is it the line above where we're getting the index? No, it's that one. It's line 184 on there. It is? And yours is the same? Yes. Can you share it with us? Oh, I've selected index. Oh, okay, good. Because, yeah, there's a bunch of those. And you can have selected items, and that would be just a little different. Okay, you ready to try it? Let's try it. Okay, so I see my stuff, my ugly album showing up up here. Ugh, I'm gonna click reset, type in some stuff. And I see it. Now, can I click on that first one and have it show up over here? It's good. Can you go back and forth? It always pulls up the last one. The last one we entered. Yours does? Or no, will mine too if I do another one? Let me try another one. Because sometimes I'm only doing two and that might not be enough to really test. <laughs> Yeah, it's working. Can we see it? I worked with advertise. Yay. Are they working? Okay, Caleb's working. What's it doing, sir? Fighting with him? We need a DJ. It's so quiet in here. I wouldn't be able to hear you. It'd be great. Did you find it? 
Well, I had an error earlier. Mm -hmm. When I commented it out, I started working again. So I assume when I commented out, it's like making this part not work. Let's help. Let us help you. Do you want to show us? Yeah. Here, let me stop sharing so we can see what's going on. All righty. This is this is where I commented this out, and without this, it works, but it won't switch back. It was giving me an error right here. Where at? Line thirty-seven. On my... Oh, let's see your audio CD class. Do you have a no art constructor? Yes. Change your namespace. Is it the same? Yeah, it's the same. But it lets you use that audio CD in other places. On line 37. Um, go up just a little bit for me. Instance. CD, instant CD. Okay, do you see line 21? Yeah. Line 21 and line 37 should be the same exact name. Are they the same? Yeah. Why does it not like it? I don't see it. Should I just copy your um, put it in there? Yeah. Because when I comment this out, it'll run. Right. But, but it's not working right. Yeah, it's not going to work right. Well, you can keep using it if you want to, because it's pretty close, and then we'll figure out what's going on with it. It's up to you, but it looks really close. It's some small thing we'll figure out. Okay. Let me share back again. Thank you, guys. All right. Beautiful. So what we need then is make our thing look better. So if I run this right now, our two string output doesn't look very good over here. So let's go to our audio CD. We were looking at it there on his, but let's go to our audio CD class. And in our audio CD class, we have our two string method that is our default method that displays our class as a string basically. And when we run it, we're seeing all this extra junk, all these headings and things that aren't being helpful to us. So let's create a new method that is not an override of the two string. And we'll call it, um, short string. And in our short string, let's copy all of this code out of our two string. And then I want to get rid of all this stuff. So I'm going to do ID and then I'm going to do space name, um, space artist, space num tracks, and space cost. So not a huge amount of change. We'll just kind of get rid of the, the headings.
Now, I want to go back to our form code. And it's going to be the spots where we put the, th the CD into our items. So right here, instead of instant CD, I'm going to do instant C CD dot short string. And I think that we have that in a couple more places. Hmm, would have been nice if we would have put it in a method, huh? Let's go find it because we didn't. Oh, here's one. My line 166. It is in form load. And instead of just instant CD, I'm going to make it instant CD dot short string. Well, that seems to me not doing that. Do I? I had actually made a very simple method to add the items in because I found myself doing that a couple of times. Uh huh. And so I had figured we were probably going to update that procedure a little bit. So I figured, let's put that in a method. And now we've gotten to that point, and I actually needed to be able to do different things in different spots. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a good try, though. Okay, those are the only two I can find. Do we have any others? That's it for right now. So we had everything working. Did we break it? The CD looks pretty good now. I've got, you know, I can see everything anyways. It doesn't, it obviously could use more work. But it looks a lot better than just that junk. I'm going to go ahead and reset and add another one. And now if I click on that first one, if it was still working like before, oh, I should see that it's not working anymore, is it? So was, was that two-string method important in making that work? Let's stop and let's go back and put it back. Control-Z, Control-Z a few times. And now if I run again, after I put that back. Huh, it's working again. So this is a really important point, huh? What we've got here is, if we use the default to string, we're being able to keep that object in that list box, right? It's keeping track of everything. As soon as we change it and we say, oh no, we're just using, we're just saving the output from this method, this short string method. Now I don't have that object saved anymore. I just have the output from my short string method. So we have to use the object name here. We can't use a method name there to make that work. Yes, sir? It seems like to solve this particular problem, what we want to do is have the short version of our message as the default to string, and then put the longer version in what you initially called the short string method, but it's might actually be better named to be long string. The long string, that sounds like a really, that in, yeah, a that's a really good way to look at it. So we're seeing that default to string should just be our basic, stuff and then yeah we could format it however we wanted from some other method so notice that it's really important and what you'll have happen is sometimes people don't realize that's why it's not working and i've seen people they'll create a whole like secondary array structure to keep track of all of these objects and then every every time an object changes they'll reload that list box with all of the objects from their array and they'll kind of keep that list box and that array in sync like they're parallel. We don't need to go to all that work if we have the list box act as that array just holding those objects for us. So yeah, we have to fix our, our two string. Let's go fix it because that's the only way we can handle keeping track of those objects. So we'll go back to our audio CD.
And so for our two string, um, I'll output it this short way. And then for our other one, I'll output it this long way. And we'll call it long string. I do like that. It does make more sense than short string. It does. It gives that an easy effect longer. Longer. Wait, what did you do? Just magic. <laughs> Basically. And then we can use the long string method for when we want to show a more detailed cleaner version of the message in particular. Let me fix it so you can see them both. Okay, so there is our two string that just outputs each field. Now, if we start um, next time, we'll be talking about outputting things to files. And again, we could have another need for another type of output string method, depending on how we need to output things to a file. So whenever we're generating our output, it's really common for us to need multiple different types. Now let's try it, make sure everything's all happy. Again, it's not the most beautiful display. In our list box, if we were creating this as a real world app, we would go ahead and use columns in our list box, like on a Windows form, and we could actually say, this is the ID column, the name column, but it would take a lot more code than what we have to load those things into those specific columns. But it's not any more complicated than what we have, just more code. So we could do that, and that would make things nice and perfect. I'm going to click Reset, though, and add another one. Lots of tracks, really expensive. And I'm going to keep adding a few more so that I can make sure everything's working good. And then I'll click on them and make sure that those are the ones that are showing up to me and everything's great. Okay, so if everything's working there, we have one more change to make. We'd like to be able to update this data and click OK and have it change the information in our list box. Right now we can add great, but we don't have anything to change to update. So let's see what we need to do there. I'm going to go to our OK button first and look at the code that we have. Right now all the code that we have assumes we're doing an add. Whenever we clicked our reset button, we made our selected index. Oops, we didn't. Let's go to our reset button. In our reset button, um, here where we click ready to add, let's set our selected index equal to negative one. Now in our OK button, code. Let's set it to where all that code that we have, we only do if the selected index is negative one. So no change or anything. We're just moving it to within this if statement. Um, We'll, when they click reset, we set it to negative one, allow them to type in data, add that item. Now, if somebody clicks on an item, we're using the selected index that they clicked on. So it will not, selected index will not be negative one. So we've already got that in place. So let's do an else clause. So if we're looking at an update, we need to set our instance CD equal to that list box data. 
that we got earlier. And remember we had to cast it. Now that sets our instant CD back to the data that was original. And we need to get all of the data out of the text boxes that the users have updated. So we need to run this method load class data because it copies everything from our text boxes into our class. Now we can update the items in our list box using our selected index. And we'll just set it equal to everything in our instance CD. After we do that, we wanna update our text box, our status to say item updated. Now at this point, when we do the add, you guys can decide how you want your application to work. When we do the add, we run this reset form that clears out all of our text boxes. Do you want to do that after you've updated an item too, so that it's all empty, waiting for them to click on one? Or do you want to leave that data sitting there? I feel like it's sitting there. Like it's sitting there? Let's leave it sitting there and see if it causes us any trouble with the way we have it set up. Sometimes those little small details don't hit you until you're really running it. Okay, let's try it and see if we've got an update working. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. Click on my old default and say new name. object reference not set to an instance of an object. So if we look at our message here, it's telling us, hmm, your instance CD was null. There wasn't anything in it. If we look at some of our settings, we will see that it's really mad at us about this instance CD. And I'm gonna go back to our OK button. Let me stop here and see if I can figure anything out. If I look at our OK button, doo -doo 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 -doo. we said, oh, you can do all of this. You've got an instance CD here from that, that, that one that we were looking at. Isn't it good? Is there something wrong with it? It shouldn't, because it is already one, though. That's a good thought, but it shouldn't. We're going to leave this right now, actually, for you guys, and I want you to try to do some troubleshooting. So I want you to use the debugger and step through it and try to figure out what's going on with this. Now, I'm talking about 30 minutes or so. I don't want you to, you know, just like totally torture, torture yourself with it, but I do want you to step through it and try to come up with some ideas before next time, and we'll solve this problem, right? But I want you to kind of look at it on your own first. It's a tough one. So let's save it. Don't worry, the 8 o'clock class had to, too. And you're enough different, it won't be the same problem, probably. But I want to save that, and I want to close it, because I want to create a new project. So let's create a new one. Nice, easy one. How's that? This one is getting like kind of big. It's actually a pretty much a real world application. If you think about it, you could kind of give somebody this and it would do things for them that they needed to maintain. Be great if it had a database. 
But other than that, it's pretty well a solid app. We want to see. Yeah. It's your way. We want to do a menu. You guys, ha we haven't had a chance to do a menu, and I don't want to put a menu in that application that's getting so busy because it might be hard for us to identify where that menu stuff is. So let's create a new application, a new project. We want it to be a Windows Forms app, and I'm going to name it Chapter 10 Menu 102. Perfect, just where we wanted to be. Now, looking at our form, I'm going to update our text property to say this is a menu app. I was harassing you guys the other day. What's the title bar? What's the menu bar? What's the toolbar? All those strip grade things that we don't remember all the time, but we have to when we're programming. Menu bar is the menu words, and that's what we're going to create. And when we look at a Windows form, Menus are pretty specific. They have a pretty specific layout. So it's not just wide open however you want to make it. First of all, let's find our control. Sitting here looking at my, my cute form, I see a category here that's menus and toolbars. It was kind of made for the menu strip. The, the tool we want is the menu strip. When you drag it and drop it on your form, it's not really going to matter where you put it because it's gonna go up to the top, right? Now, if you had your window settings changed to where, um, well, you can move your taskbar, but I don't think you can move menus. They stay at the top. So when I'm looking at a menu, the first menu, bless you, the first menu item we use almost always have is file. So I just click up there and type file. Now, how about our menu strip control? It's actually in two areas. We've got this information up here where we're typing it, but notice down here we have a menu strip also. This is our component tray, this area down here. So components that are part of our form but don't, don't necessarily all fit on the form will be displayed down here in the component tray. So if you click on your menu strip down there in the component tray, you'll see the properties for your overall strip. So you could change settings if you wanted to, that would affect all of the menu items on that menu strip. Now, when you get off of the component tray and you look at the individual items here in your menu, those menu items each have their own property. So when I click on File, I'm looking here at the File menu item. Now, whenever I am working with Windows, what keystroke activates the menus? What keystroke? Huh? Alt. Alt. Press your Alt key. Now, when you press your Alt key, you see your menus are activated. And when I look at my menus in Visual Studio, when me pressing the Alt key, my special hot key codes are also underlined. So now I know that if I'm working in the dark and I have no mouse, but it's four in the morning and I better. We can get this fixed. I know I can use the F key to make my file menu activate, right? Because it's got the little underline under the F. Now, once I've got that file menu open, I could use O for open, D for add, C for close. These are all very consistent. They're Windows standards. So I need my file menu to show that little underline when somebody clicks Alt on my menu. And the way I do that, is by putting an ampersand character before the F. So whatever letter is gonna have the underscore needs to have the ampersand before it. Now under our file menu, we're not gonna have a lot. We're just gonna have exit. And under for exit, it's gonna be the X that has the underscore. So we wanted to say, E ampersand XIT. Now I want to name both of those. So for my file menu, I'm going to name it MNU file. 
And then for my exit, I'm going to name it MNU exit. Now, some people get really deep with their menu names, and they might actually name it MNU file exit. And you know, that could matter. If you have some really deep menus, you might need to have that kind of naming standard. Now, besides file on our menu, we're going to have help. Now, press the Alt key and see what letter is supposed to be the hot key for help. It's the H. So I'm going to do ampersand, TLP, and then I'll name that one. MNU help. You can tell that sometimes you have to kind of go off of them and come back. And then under help, come on, help. Under help, I want about. And if you look at the help menu in Visual Studio, help about is always the help option that you use to determine what version of something you're on, what exact information. So if I look at help about for Visual Studio, this is the screen I would go to if I were talking to tech support, right? Because I would be able to tell them exactly what version of everything were installed on my system, help about. So we're gonna create an help about for our application. And so I believe it is the A, let me double check. Yeah, that's our about. So for our about, we want Amper about. Now, I'm going to name it MNU about. Okay, so we got them all named. We only have four things on our menu. So it's really easy to work with, really nicely laid out, very quick to create your menus, kind of like some of the other forms control stuff. Very quick to create a huge giant mess if you don't watch out with what you're doing because it can get out of hand really quickly. Okay, so let's do our, menu, our file exit. I think somebody mentioned the other day that we hadn't written any code to close the form, which is true. So we need some. Let's do it. I'm going to click on file and then I'm going to double click on exit to create that event procedure for that menu. So just like any other Windows component, I can create the event procedure associated with that click event. Now for this one, we know that that application class was what we used to load our form. If we looked at that program.cs, we saw it said application.run and then our form within it and that creates that run loop for our form. Well, if I look at that application class, and do a dot to bring up IntelliSense to see what other kinds of things it'll let me do. Do you see an exit or a close or quit or something? That allow quit. Don't allow <laughs> now what's cool is if you click on one, it, it gives you the help about it. So it'll kind of tell you, because allows exit says that it's going to let you exit. Yeah, click allow quit. Very cool. Okay, so there's our application.exit. Run it, see if it works. We should be able to file, exit, close out of our application. Woohoo! Now you should be able to use your Alt key too, right? So Alt F X should close out. Because if it's three in the morning, you've got to be able to use those keystroke things. Okay, so now we want to create a help about. Let's bring up another form. We want this to look kind of nice. It'll be a form about us. So let's go find a picture. What kind of picture would you like? Yes, sir. I'm terribly sorry, but I find myself to go a little bit early all of a sudden for myself. Thank you. Let's find one. What would you like? I can't remember what I used this morning. That was a really long time ago. Like a final record. That would be good. Record store stuff. <laughs> What's a Blu ray? It's like a record, but small. Yeah. 
Now you guys know the story about CDs, right? The yeah. CD story about from our country and Japan and all that. CDs are actually invented in the United States, but they made them as big as albums. And they were like, they're so huge. Nobody's ever gonna buy them because they'll cost a fortune because they have so much music on them. They're dumb. So they didn't worry about it because it's like, this is dumb. Yep, they're too dumb. So Phillips from Japan said, we will buy the rights to that idea from you, silly Americans. And they were like, sure, you can have it. They're huge. Nobody's ever going to want this too much music. And they got them and they said, what if we just made them small? Mm -hmm. And they fit the same amount of music as an album does now. And so that's how they, the CDs got to Japan because we didn't want them because we couldn't think outside the box, right? Well, and then we Try to continue to try to make mini discs. Mini discs and everything's got to be all the same. Yeah. Well, and I think that if you look at them, they, they actually made CDs the size of 45, the old yeah. single player. They're, they're that size. So they really didn't come up with a new size still, even though they <laughs> made them smaller. Okay, I've got to get these guys in uh, New Orleans. Come on, you guys. I think it's this one on charters. I'll just get something here. What do I want? Oh, look, they've got shirts. I'll get some store merch or something. Okay, find a picture, find a picture. You guys can find a better picture. I'm having trauma. I'm just going to get this shirt, and then that way I'm just being like, yes, I love this store. We, we just need a picture of the company. Any sort of picture that you would like. We are trying to get pictures of record store stuff, since that's sort of what we are. It doesn't matter what we say that. Nope. nope, it doesn't, because we're going to copy it into your project. Now, once you've got it, whenever we um, copied our first picture into our project, we went to our form and we created a picture box control, and then we clicked on what image we want to add. There's another way we can do it. So if you come with me, right-click on your project, where it has the C-sharp logo, the green logo icon, right-click and choose Properties. When you get to your project properties, we've gone here before. We've used project properties to set like what startup form we want. We could change our icon. For this though, I want to look at our resources. Now, when I've got resources up here, I could use all these drop downs and things across the top to tell it that I wanted to look at images, or I could just drag and drop my picture that I just copied into that resources and then it should be available to me now our resources if you look you do the drop down up here and you see where it says images notice that you can have audio and icons and all sorts of different things there in those resources that you could just drop down in your resources folder now since we have our image there Let's go ahead and create a new form. Now to create a new form, again, we wanna be on our project and we wanna right click and choose add. We can add Windows form directly. We could add a new item and choose Windows form from the list. I'll just add a Windows form. And I wanna name this about form. Now, since it's going to be my about form, I'm going to put that picture on it. So in my toolbox, I'm going to find that picture box control. And I want it to be a little bigger. Now, once you've got your picture box control, you click the quick tasks and choose image. Your, your picture should already be in your, pro, in your images.
Yeah, or just use the size mode and change it. You should be able to get it to fit. Now I've got my ugly picture. I'm going gri to grab a text box. And you notice how that Visual Basic one, that Visual Studio about had that whole list of things. I'm going to do mine that same way. I'm going to put a text box on here. My text box, I want it to be multi-line. Now when I make this text box multi-line, I can actually type that text in. If I click in the text property and click this drop down arrow, that'll show me a multi-line text box input. So I'm going to say something like um, audio media maintenance. This is version 1.0, April 22nd, 2019. Renew, renew, audio, Esquire. Anything else that you want to put there? And then I'm going to fix my text box so that it shows all that stuff. Now, once you've got it, we need to um, make our other form display this form when somebody clicks on that option. So I'm going to go back to our original form, form one, and I'm going to cl double click on help about. So when somebody clicks about, what I want to do is create a new instance of my about form. And then my about form, I want to show. Now there are several, if you notice, several ways we can show that form. If we just do a plain show, the background form, the parent would stay active. They would be like separated from each other and the about form could just hang out and do whatever it wanted and we could move things around. We don't really want that. We want our about form to display and we want them to have to close it to continue on with our application. So we're going to use the show dialog, and that should be all we need to make it show that. Let's try it. And there's my cute form. I like it, but I think I want it to move. So I think I want to, is it GIF or is it GIF? Which do you prefer? Let's go find one. Huh? Yeah, we pronounced it GIF, even though I hate it. <laughs> he created it. So he gets to say, huh? He probably forgot. So let's find one. <laughs> I want it to be a record store dot GIF. How is that with Google? You have to put a colon or something in front of it to make it do that file type. Um, that's for the e record. For the record. <laughs> Let's see. I think that. There's way too much going on here. <laughs> way too much. <laughs> Look at all of them. 
Okay, I'm gonna get Rory. Come on, Rory. I'm gonna save it. Now, I'm gonna go to my application and I'm gonna update my resources to add Rory. So I'm gonna right click on my project, do properties, um, look at my pictures folder and drag Rory in there. Now, since I've got her in my resources folder, it should be really easy. I'll just go to my picture box and click on the arrow and change my image to Rory. Now notice the moving picture does not move, but when I run it, it does. So it does give us some movement on our about form. Um, you just dragged it into the same place, right? Into that resources folder, uh-huh. And then after I dragged it in there, I clicked that black arrow on the picture box to choose image. Right, no, I got that, but. Did you find it? Everybody find when? Got some movement going. Can you tell you're going to need a help about in your final? <laughs> help about. <laughs> you're about out of time. Can you go? We haven't done this one. It's about a raise. Oh, Rob's going to win. Nobody gets to, oh, now we got other people in there. <laughs> hey, it's a good way. Oh, somebody stole my identity again. Did it. <laughs> and we got sad boy. <laughs> Did anybody see the Sunday morning show yesterday? My husband is now a K-pop expert. <laughs> they were on the Sunday morning show. I don't know why that makes me think of K-pop sad boy. <laughs> Someone needs sleep. I hope they get it. We should kill Nixon. Okay, how are we doing? 15, 3, 4, 7, 10. We're pretty close. Just such a politically active group. I, I, I'm not sure exactly where we stand. Let's start and see how they do. Which allocates an array? 
good you have a Zoom session going because you have to look at this code. Use your Zoom session. <laughs> These are so good because you can put the little square thingies in so many places. <laughs> really good, really good. It was actually really good. See, our need sleeper, they're good, doing good. Here they're just complaining. <laughs> Which adds an entry to an array. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good for code in a cahoots. Guido. Which access which access is an item from an array? That's not what it was wanting, though, was it? <laughs> okay. Using two arrays in sync is called. <laughs> Parallel array is very good. It is multiple, but there is a more correct answer available. <laughs> Which returns a copy of an array? <laughs> oh, can't trick anybody here. Which header correctly returns an array? <laughs> oh, good job. <laughs> oh, I see what I did. <laughs> good, good, good. Our need sleeper. Which header correctly expects an array is a parameter. I know they're so hard. It's just like the the worst possible cahoots. <laughs> you guys are so good. It's so much to read. I know they're awful, aren't they? <laughs> Which returns an array from a method? This one was great this morning. Let's see how you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep, same, same, same. <laughs> That's why we got to review that one all the time, huh? Okay, you are set. Wednesday, we'll look at file access. Let's see who won here. Our need sleeper. This is embarrassing. And then this dot. <laughs> <laughs> in Cusco. So good job. See you guys later. Have a great day. I don't know what to Yeah, I was looking at it for a good hour. I'm like, what is it? You know, we were walking from downtown Springfield. Downtown, we were going to be and I got your emails. I was like, what is it? And I did a quick search. I saw the dot count. I'm like, let's try that. Thanks. Yeah, I'm like, what is it? 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 Y
Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. That was my second time going. What did you see there? Oh, we just went, you know, just to Walmart crowd and just went kind of Yeah. It was busy. Is it? Oh, it was crazy. We, we happened to go on Easter weekend, oh. which is not only oh. a biker rally, but also oh. the District Ward Alcoholics Anonymous Springtime in the Ozarks meeting. Oh, my God. So, oh my. The entire so it's a really nice group. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah. And the thing is, well, the ironic thing is, that town has more bars in, in alcohol stores than any other town I've been to. And they have yeah. alcoholics and none of this. That's what I was thinking. Shouldn't they have been having like some sort of like LGBT the thing? <laughs> the hotel we stayed at had a, a store built onto it, an alcohol store just in it. Just that was like <laughs> technically, um, Stratford does technically. By the strict standards of the law, it doesn't have to be bars inside of it. Yeah. But there is one restaurant that has the bar in it. Yeah. That sells like a. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go with the, in the May. I think we decided like May 21st or something. Yeah. May 21st. Oh, no, it's not on my calendar. So I hope that's not a busy. It's, it's like the week before Memorial Day. So it could be busy depending on if we, people take the whole week. We, we talked to some shop owners and stuff, and they said it's always like that. But For we Easter. got caught behind the Easter parade. Oh my <laughs> god! So I was stuck there, just sitting in downtown <laughs> in for like a half hour, just waiting for things to move. It was ridiculous. Okay, so did you go? I know you didn't, but did you go out to that glass church? Yes, I did actually. Did you? So was it easy yeah, to find? That's where we want to go. Okay, it's actually, it was really easy to find. It's was from, it? It's off the main highway, just right off. Cause see, I've gone to Eureka Springs before, but I've never gone to that, and so that's it's what really I told her I wanted to go to. I think I have a picture of it actually. Yeah, I do. It's a. It was yeah, I didn't get the best picture, of course, but I got. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, it was, no, yeah. it's beautiful. It's, it was I love awesome the way day. you see the sun yeah. reflecting. Oh, oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And it was a beautiful day. You see, like, that doesn't look like it was super busy. That's what I was thinking. No, that was early in the morning. Was it? So we woke up really early. Yeah. That, we were on our way out to go kayaking mm -hmm. at a lake. Mm -hmm. and that's like a few miles past that. Mm -hmm. So we were out there early. And we saw the sign. We're like, hey, did we want to see that? So we pulled over and went over there. Awesome. So we just happened to find it. We didn't even search for it. Oh, that's great. I'm excited. It is so pretty. Mm -hmm. We didn't go inside because it was early on a Saturday. Was it, yeah, was it too early? Not even. It said you could go on in, but you had to have a seat. And we, oh. just, we just said, ah, we'll come back to you. I don't figure we'd be there very long. That's kind of my thought. We just take a few pictures yeah. to go, but I just would love to see it. I've always wanted it's a nice to see walk. it. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be neat. And then you went floating. Yeah. <sighs> nice. Beautiful day. Mm -hmm. That's and there's great. also the next to that glass church, there's another one that I, I can't remember what they called it, but it's not completely glass like that one. They're still like, it's the same architecture. Yeah. But it's all on stilts because they built it on the side of the mountain. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. And the office is neat so too. The office is built into the side of the mountain. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool place. That's neat. Maybe if one of my kids ever gets married, I can talk him into doing it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you later. See you. Oh, <laughs> I finished the whole project and I didn't check it in. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh. But I did paste it. I would document. You and your word document saving your behind. I love it. I have to. <laughs> That's so good. I wasn't a computer like I did it, so hopefully I won't have any problems now. Good thing I did that.
know what the hell is going to be. Oh, excuse me, but she wants this woman. That's probably what you say about me, too. No. No, our evaluations, we have like, there's like 70 forms. Wow. <laughs> well, maybe not that many. <laughs> but every form, there's like one version of it for staff and one version of it for administration and one version of it for faculty and then another version of it for somebody else. I don't know. And so it's just a mess to try to get the, make sure you've got the right one. Mm hmm can you upload the CD on campus? Also? The new one? Yeah, the new one. No, yeah. you'll have to do it on your own. Okay. I want to. What were you doing? I missed something and it's hard to figure out. Let me. I'll try to get it out yeah, there for you. I, it's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to have so many copies of it. Nobody and can tell what, what they. What did you do to make the alt shortcut? Like you set it up so fast. Just the menu. Yeah. So you do. How do you set up the? Just the app? ampersand makes the little underscore show up if you press Alt. So I do it, but it showed the menu of the Visual Studio. Because you have to be running yours. So if I am looking, if if um, let me show you. You probably have it right. Yeah. So right now, if I alt, it's going to be Visual Studio. Yes. But if I run my application, but, but how do you set it to the and I press letter? alt? Oops. Yeah, how do you in the menu. menu. Yeah. In the menu when you create your menu. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah. And how do you make it F and F? You type the ampersand. Can you see it that way? Oh, what's that called? Ampersand. Ampersand. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. ampersand. I didn't know what it's called, like, that's so like... shift seven. So okay. that's the one you want. So I'll post this out there so you can see it. But okay. that's what you needed okay. with that ampersand. So yeah, let me post this one for you. Yeah, I just do all that stuff. And I'm like, what do you don't know? <laughs> and you just yell and say, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't get my F letter and the line. Uh -huh. so every time I put all, it will just take the first letter. Uh -huh. Of it. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yep, I'll post it for you. Thank you. No problem. Thank Have you. You too. Oh, I wonder if I can go back to the lab and Let's see, where am I? Okay, let's see, see. He's so sweet. What did he say he was doing to get le to learn English? Oh, I didn't hear anything. Watching Friends or something? Oh, really? I think so. Well, I'm hoping to go back to the computer lab. If I open that up, well, it's, it might still be on there, right? What's that? The Visual Studio. Because I didn't check it in, but I did it over there. I made too many changes. To oh, yeah, things. yeah. It should still be. You should still be able to bring it up okay. on your account, I would think. I just made too many. Yeah, they could have magic software that would wipe it out, but I don't think they have okay, that you. much. <laughs> I, hope I hope not. Oh, yeah, it should still be there. Should still be there. Did you have a good Easter? Yeah, it was pretty good. Good. The um, job assignment 
I was ready to pull my hair out because um, I couldn't get the pasted over version working. The f raising flag uh -huh. it wasn't working and it kept in his hair. Uh -huh. Trying everything. So I found out today it's because I put the image in the wrong file. Oh, and it just wasn't finding yeah, it. Something so easy like that. Mm -hmm. so well, you know. Much time. <laughs> that's one of those things where as a teacher you just don't know what to do because like I fought and fought with all those dumb images every semester and we just have all these problems but then everybody was really aware of all these problems yeah. and so then this semester I was like my god I'm not gonna have all these problems we're just and so I found some stuff on how you're really supposed to do it yeah. so it's all nice and smooth but then if something goes wrong yes. it's like so I mean problems are good sometimes you hate to have them but they really do help people know what to do well good luck good I'm luck I'm sure it'll still be I'm there gonna I'm gonna head out if you're gonna head out okay, yeah. out of here and Hopefully. see what what's it like out there is it nice. good it was cold in here. Did you not think it was? Well, I had <laughs> See you later. Uh huh. <coughs> I think I really need it. And um, I like it better than Java, although I'm really having a hard time. Anyway, mm -hmm. what do you think if I took it in the fall? But I do have capstone in the fall. Is it going to be too much? Well. You are very good at scheduling. So I think that you're going to be okay because you are realistic about things. And I think the people that have the problems are the ones that are just like, I'm going to work on the capstone until I die. And, and you, you're going to know you have to give yourself certain blocks of time to work on it. Oh, a lot of time. Just right. Wait until last minute. Mm -hmm. Well, and instead of, if you run out of time with the capstone, you have to stop and to say, Tiffany, we ran out of time. Instead of like some of these guys this semester are going to make it to where they're not employable because they're not stopping. If you know what I mean, they're spending so much time working on it that they're not going to be able to find a job or anything. So Jim does it good because he's, He's this time for the capstone, this time for other stuff. Yeah. You know, and he knows there's a chance that you might have to allocate a little bit more time to something. Yeah. But it, it, it's the, the ones I'm worried about. There's two or three of them that have just stopped doing anything else completely. And so they're going to have classes they have to drop or that they fail. And they're, they're, they're. So you're saying that they're putting everything into the capstone and don't have any time for anything else. Is yes. That and mean? that's not the appropriate way to handle your schedule. Right. right. So there has to, you have to at some point say the capstone can't be met because of this. I have all of these other responsibilities mm -hmm. that I, and it should be one of many, not the only. Right. And you're really good at that. So I think that you'll be okay. I think it'll be a challenging semester. Yeah. But I think that you're good at it. Either that or I can add another semester, which I hate to do. Well, if you can get by with that. Be I want like a job, please. <laughs> <laughs> Got anything. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to take the summer because I don't want to rush through. No, I think it's too rushed. I really do. Yeah. I don't think you'd like it at all. The so way if, it I can, goes. if I can have enough time to do everything, I'm saying Yeah, yeah. I think you will. Ask Tiffany what she thinks because, so I've seen with the capstone, usually right around this time and about a week ago, People have two or three weeks of being really, really, really busy when everything culminates. They've talked to those their users. They know what to do. Mm -hmm. They're ready to actually do something. Um, but this semester, I've seen people spend the whole semester just worrying, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not doing any other mm -hmm. stuff. Cause, and you won't do that. I know you'll just be like, it's not working. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Right. They'll do something when they figure out what to make out. Yeah. So, I like you're pretty. Blue, your blue, blue. Oh, Sally's. That's cute. Are they sticker? No, no, they're, they're regular. Oh, cool. I have red. I don't have it. Um, 
like them. I wear a lot of cheap stuff. Huh? Yeah, those yeah. are super cute. Yeah. We have any. I think you'll be okay. I Ask don't Tiffany. Like my group for Java. They're not very nice. Really? And see, they're both really good. So I wonder what the deal is. Because I was really surprised at the three of you not having anything done for those squares because they're both, you're all three so good. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's that there isn't oh, the a leader? Mm -hmm. um, the one guy that sits back here, Justin, he, mm -hmm. he is very bossy and very, this is, uh, this is my idea. I don't care about what they say. Oh, is he? Um, oh. Yeah. Because I, I uh, messaged him because we're on Facebook as a group. Uh -huh. And I said, uh, you know, do you, do you want to do some if statement? Do you want to do this stuff? Oh, we don't need any of that. I said, I said uh, we need a submit button. Are you making the buttons? And you know what are they mm -hmm. called so we can identify them and make make them do stuff. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Oh, we don't need to do that. I said that's the whole assignment. You need to submit an order. Uh huh. He's got it all figured out. I don't know. So I did the pictures. I did the setup of the GUI. Good. So I don't know. And then that uh, other one, it's his name, Cole. Cole. Yeah, no, he's always on his phone. Is he? Because he he's always on his face. phone when we're doing class. Oh, now, I've been super happy when he's gotten off of his phone a few times and actually done things. But it yeah, doesn't that, happen very often. And then often. when he's off, he's like. <laughs> Still on the earth. Yeah, so between the two of them. I don't, I don't know how they ended up being so lame because they're both, you're all, you're all three very good, but it just doesn't seem to be working. I don't think it's working well as a group. I just was wondering, I don't think the two of them work well with each other. I think it's more them because, well, they just, I hadn't seen them talk to each other. Have you seen them talk to each other? No. I don't know if they have another class together. You know, sometimes there's sure. other things that we don't know about where I they've know. done something before together that didn't work out or yeah. what. But I, don't I just know. don't know. And then when we did the matching um, thing, I suggested something. And they said, oh, no, that won't work. Okay. Ten minutes later, they said, why don't we do that? I said, I said that ten minutes ago. They don't want to listen to me. Mm. Oh, that's where we're at. I'm trying my best. Good luck. But at least I got something set up, and I set up all the classes. And I didn't think Justin would be that way. I've noticed he's very. Well, like I said, maybe because I'm a woman and I'm stressed. You don't know. I don't know. No, I don't think he did good on our the group stuff we did last semester either. Oh, you didn't. I don't think so. Because the the was real bossy. Was he? Because I had him in Java one too. Like so you're like one of the only people that's in Java 2 and C Sharp 1. Joey is not in Java 2. Can't remember. But I was thinking about that the other day because you were you here the other day? He was asking how come Java 1 was less stuff than C Sharp 1. And I started thinking about it over the weekend, Joey, because it was really bothering me. And I was like, I don't know. And then I started thinking about it. I didn't get to tell him today. But I want to tell him it wasn't less stuff. It was because he was doing it online. So he wasn't exposed to the other ideas and questions from the other students. So yeah. he had tunnel vision. You know what I mean? I mean, he did a great job. Yeah. But he just was like, oh. Step A, do step A, and he was never exposed to other people talking about it. I had the hardest time converting the, uh, the, list, in, uh, the list on the menus 